Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into my channel, welcome. Today is the uh, 23rd of October, 2023. I've been back from my new moon trip. I put a couple videos up, um, did some imaging with Patrick Kerrigan, Patrick's Astro and stuff as well as Christian Ralph. Met them in Amboy, California. It was a good trip. The videos are up. Now I'm back home. I'm dealing with a lot of data. I'm uh, working with PixInsight to get my images processed. But I'm also thinking about the future. And this video is really about the future. I like to keep the audience informed on what direction I'm going so you can determine if this type of content is something that uh, you're interested in beyond just my journey from a beginning astrophotographer trying to improve my skills in both data acquisition as well as data processing. So as you see here, I have my AM5 mount. Uh, right now the red cat is on there. But I've made a decision to move my Red Cat 51 to Nina. I love the ASI Air, and I should also admit I'm a tinkerer. I like to tinker. That may not be for everybody, but it's what really makes this hobby enjoyable for me. But after using the ASI Air for a while, I have two of them. It's a very capable platform. It's a great solution based upon what your needs are. But there's a few things that I would like to have had the ASI Air do that it does not do, but I can get those things done in Nina. So I've been working here with um, Nina, getting familiar with how to manage the AM5 mount through Nina, and then just seeing if there's any other potential issues that I may need to be aware of before I uh, switch uh, this telescope over to Nina. As you probably know if you're following the channel, my Edge HD 8, I've been using Nina to manage that. I was using the ASI Air Plus, but there came a point where I needed some additional information that the ASI Air Plus could not provide, which Nina was able to provide through its uh, Hocus Focus module and in particular, a routine within that module called Aberration Inspector. And that really enabled me to finalize my back focus spacing with uh, some success. Um, I just did not have that level of information available within the ASI Air Plus. These other things too that are important to me, in particular with the Red Cat 51, I'm using my ASI 294MM Pro, and it's got some unique characteristics. I really can't use bias frames. You need to get the uh, sensor, as I understand it, at least within the community of ASI 294MM uh, Pro owners, they say it's best to take flats and then uh, flat darks. And Nina's Flat Wizard enables me finer control and is the shortest path time-wise to me uh, for me to get the necessary flats and flat darks that I need in support of the ASI 294mm Pro camera. Um, and, and it's just little things too, like uh, something as simple as just the slew to Zenith command in Nina, which I've not found in the ASI Air. It's just a little convenience. Um, maybe I'm nitpicking a little bit. There's other things too that I like about Nina. I successfully created a two target advanced sequencer uh, template to run a night of imaging where I was able to start with one target and then as the other target became available above 30 degrees at a certain time of the night, 
it then switched over to image that target. And then at the end of imaging that target, after astronomical dawn, Nina shut everything down for me. And so that was um, a big success for me. I had a few issues with some drift and um, other aspects, but as far as my advanced sequencer template, I now have something that's pretty good. I have a starting sequence. I have target one sequence, which I used LRGB. I have target two sequence that I used that night that was narrowband HA, S2, and O3. And what I wanted to do through that sequence is I wanted to run through all my filters since I use the feature within Nina called filter offsets, where it uses luminous as the primary filter and then Nina knows the offset for the other filters so we could just move the focus motor to where uh, appropriately for each additional filter without having to do another auto focus run. Now I set a time to automatically do auto fo focus runs through the the night of imaging um, so uh, that's uh, that's important as well. So anyway, uh, that's one of the projects that I'm engaged with is moving everything over to Nina. Uh, I made a decision today to purchase a uh, particular uh, product, which I'll uh, do more. Uh, I'll do a video on, but it's from uh, Prima Luci Labs. I purchased the Eagle 5S. I went back and forth on that. I could go with another Nuke and uh, Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance. I can go that route. But I'm also rolling out a new roadmap for my Edge HD8. I'm not getting any younger. My wife's not getting any younger. I enjoy this hobby. If my mobility becomes limited or there's an issue uh, that my wife experiences where I have to stay around the house more often and maybe I can't do my dark side trips, then maybe uh, I place my Edge HD in a remote observatory. So my roadmap now for my Edge HD 8 is focused on when I make a hardware purchase Will that purchase help support remote management? And the Eagle 5S is kind of, is foundational to preparing my Edge HD8 for a potential future remote uh, observatory uh, hosting situation. So I just uh, like to know where I'm going. I don't like to buy things without a reason. And for me, it's always a little bit better to have a roadmap for things. So if I do have to make a purchase, I know where that purchase fits in and what that purpose of that uh, purchase is as far as what I'm trying to achieve down the road. So, so that's kind of exciting. The other thing uh, related to the AM5, I ordered the um, counterweight rod, which actually goes, this comes off and you can put a counterweight rod in here and then I, you can put a counterweight on it. I plan to do some testing of my Edge HD8 on uh, the AM5. And I'm thinking the trip that's coming up to Borrego Springs, Nightfall, 2023, which is run by Riverside Astronomical Society down in Borrego Springs, might be the place to try out the Edge HD for a night or nights, several nights of imaging on the AM5. Of course, I'll do some testing here at home prior to that trip. But what that affords me is this configuration here of the AM5, the pier, and the tripod is very compact. And I need some additional room in my van for that trip because Lori and I want to take our electric bikes and there's some support equipment that has to go with it, batteries, chargers, bicycle helmets and that. 
And right now I'm carrying around the head of the EQ6R Pro in its original shipping box, and that takes up quite a bit of space. So uh, my thought is I'm just going to take my Edge HD8. I'm going to leave my Red Cat 51 uh, at home, and I'll just focus on the Edge uh, HD8 down at Borrego Springs using the AM5 mount. Now, ZWO says you can go up to 28 pounds of payload without a counterweight. And I know someone that's running over 25 pounds on their AM5 without any issues, no counterweight. But maybe I'm a little bit um, uh, risk adverse, so I want to I wanna take some baby steps. Uh, and so that's why I'm going. The rod was $43, and I already have the counterweights from my uh, HEQ5 uh, Pro mount, so I'll use one of those. ZWO says you could put up to 11 pounds of counterweight on the AM5. So uh, that is the other thing that's going on. Again, I like to keep everybody kind of up to date on which direction I'm going in. In case any of this interests you, you can make sure to hit the notification button uh, to tune into future, um, future videos that I may do. But um, I really you know, love Nina. I really love the ASI Air. They uh, have both served me well. It's just that right now, Nina can serve me a little bit better than the ASI Air can. I'll continue to keep an eye on what the ASI Air uh, product platform is looking like down the road. The other thing that using uh, Nina allows me to do is I know uh, ZWO is working on a rotator or what do they call that telescope ang angle control or whatever they call that officially, but it still is not uh, out yet. Uh, but I do think I would want, if I'm going with the Edge HD 8 at some point into a remote observatory, I need to be, have the ability to rotate um, programmatically, remotely. And then the other thing I have to tackle is how do I do my flats? Maybe it's time just to start understanding how to do successful sky flats. But uh, Primalucci Labs also has some product that you can uh, put a uh, light panel on the end that'll rotate out of the way. So again, those are things that I have on my roadmap for the future in the event I have to go on that direction. Um, but uh, yeah, so these are the, the products, projects I have going on. These are the type of things that keep me excited about this hobby. And um, I know that we all come at this from different angles. We bring different budgets. We have different goals. The most important thing is to get out there with whatever you have, get started, and then over time as you understand what's working for you and what is not working for you, maybe build a roadmap that can help guide your future purchases and you know what the dollar amounts would be, put some advanced planning into it so that way you take a more pro, uh, programmatic approach to future purchases. Uh, when the time comes to make those purchases. Okay, uh, that's about it. I don't think I left anything out. I know, um, I think that's about it. Okay, I'm just checking my brain here. It's a little slow as I, as I age. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Wherever you may be in the world, I hope you have some favorable weather when you want to go out and do your imaging, whether that be narrowband or RGB or, or whatever. Uh, other than that, see you next time.